by the Cape Long Distance Swimming Association. The CLDSA is an organization that promotes, records, and supports long distance swimming in the Cape. Long distance being swims greater than 7.4 kilometers. The organization is over 50 years old and the records include over 3,000 successful swims. Thank you to all for attending tonight. We have a diverse audience of members and non-members alike, uh, both locally and internationally. Um, so welcome all, including the watch parties that I know are watching in from Seapoint. For those who aren't members, a reminder, membership is just 300 Rand. You can sign up on www.cldsa.co.za. And for this, you will get complimentary uh, tickets to our talks, uh, special offers from Orca and Speedo, discounting, uh, discounted coaching with Michelle Weber, uh, social events, uh, discounted swims, and officiating for your swim as well. So quite a lot in that 300 Rand membership. So a large number of those 3,000 swims that I mentioned have been over some of the very popular routes. Uh, Robben Island to Big Bay, of course, being the most popular. Then we also have Cape Point and we have Prexstall to Mykonos. So, uh, however, the CLDSA website has, um, I think, about 39 different routes on the website that you can look at um, alone. And today we explore some of those hidden gems amongst those 39. So that's going to be the focus of tonight's talk. So to join me on a journey as we explore these beautiful swim routes, we have a great panel, uh, including Monica Hayes. Many of you will know Monica as a stalwart of Cape Long Distance Swimming, having done her first Robben Island way back in 2008, three hours and 43 minutes. Ten years later, she, she completed the same crossing in two hours and seven minutes. So one of the biggest differences in, 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 in achievements across the, the straits of Robben Island. Amongst her achievements are 10 Robben Islands, eight other big swim routes, the Lighthouse Swim, Camps Bay to Oceana, and multiple Atlantic seaboard swims. So welcome, Monica. Thank you, Tom. Hi, everybody. Right, next we have someone who's become a, a well-known character in the swimming community over the last uh, few years. As hard as nails, swims for hours in the coldest of waters, but always comes out smiling. She swam her first Robin Island just two years ago, I remember it well, but has slowly been putting great performance upon great performance, including multiple Robin Islands, uh, two pre extor mechanisms, and two great heart base swims, which we're going to look at uh, today. So, welcome, Linda Thompson. Thank you so much, Tom. It's cool to be here. And then we have next the formidable Howard Warrington. Whilst many swimmers claim that their spouse or partner is a swimming widow or widower, Howard often reports that it is his favorite wife, Elmarie, that is often more keen to get on the water than he is. Uh, she's not a swimmer, she's actually the skipper of the boat. So Howard can often be seen pumping out Robin Island after Robin Island, accompanied by his wife, Elmarie, as skipper and with their dog, Lily. Um, amongst uh, Howard's achievements, now you have to be very careful when you've got Howard on as a guest because literally your stats uh, are out of date by the day. Um, I think he started his first Robin Islands from about five or six years ago and he's already just completed his 90th crossing. So 90 Robin Island crossings to his name. He's done doubles, he's done triples, he's done singles. I think he's done 90 uh, CLDSA swims altogether. On top of that, he's, of course, with, amongst that, he's done Milnerton Lighthouse, he's done Cape Point, he's done the Royal to Gordon's Bay swim, and he's also done an English Channel famous piece. So, um, welcome, Howard. Howard, you're on mute. Can you just unmute yourself, please? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tom. Hi, all. We'll find that we'll be on to you just now. And the next man needs little or no intro introduction. Um, he's our first return guest and will be accompanying me as we wind our way around the peninsula tonight. Here are some of Ryan Stramrud's stats. 149 registered CLDSA swims, an English channel. He swam the Bering Strait. He swam um, Ice Mile in Antarctica. 
And he's, of course, got the most number of Robben Island crossings as well. He's from Dustin Island. There's, there's a host of other swims as well, which we, we don't have too much time on our, on our hands tonight. So that'll stop right there. Um, and these days, you might find him running all the way from his house in Rondebosch to Camps Bay to participate in Sunday Hot Chocolate. Welcome, Ryan. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Hello, everyone. Good to be back. Just a word on the format. I'll, I'll be taking uh, talking to the panel for about 30 minutes, after which we'll have about 10 minutes for questions. Shanae is also going to jump in right at the end as well. So you can pop your questions into the chat, uh, ask the swimmers, ask myself, ask, um, um, ask Shanae herself as Madam Chair uh, any questions you have. Uh, we will try and get to as many answers as possible. So I think you hopefully can see um, the peninsula on the on your screen, uh, it's a peninsula that most of us are very familiar with. Uh, you've got Robben Island in the top left, and then down in the, uh, the southern part, you've got the peninsula of Cape uh, Cape Point, and then you've got, of course, the big False Bay in the middle there. And we're going to start on the east side of False Bay. So um, I'm going to start on the east side of False Bay. We've got, of course, the, we won't be discussing today the big False Bay uh, crossing, about 33 to 34 kilometers from Millet Point to Roy Els. Uh, but we will be looking at the east side of, the, of False Bay. Now, a lot of swimmers uh, swim quite a lot on the west side and also obviously in, the, uh, in Table Bay across um, across for the, the Robben Island crossings, but not many people consider the swims that potentially could be done around uh, the east coast of False Bay. So I'm going to bring Howard Warrington into the fray. He, even though he spends so much time in the, uh, crossing uh, from Robben Island to Big Bay, uh, he actually lives out in Gordons Bay, right, Howard? Somerset West. Somerset West, so apologies. So just in the area. And um, you re fairly recently actually have done this 20K swim, if you can see it on your screen. Uh, up the east coast from Roy Else, uh, between Roy Else and, and, and Gordon's Bay. Uh, so if, if you'd like to take us through it a little bit, tell us about your experience and, uh, and what the swim has to offer. Well, thank you, Tom. Uh, the Roy Else to Gordon's Bay was, um, was, uh, was a dream for a, a very long time, many years. However, it was quite an experience. Um, Jumping in at Royal's Main Beach, you have a stretch directly across the bay to, well, that little beach area from Cool Bay to Stembrus River Mouth. Um, that's the challenge. You have about 13 and a half kilometers of swim, that stretch, to get you to um, Stembrus River Mouth. When you get there, it tends to hold you there. It's pretty turbulent waters. Uh, it, it's rough and it's tough and it holds you back. Um, and eventually it releases you as you turn towards Gordon's Bay. And that's where the hidden gem really um, exposes itself. That's phenomenal swim. Um, the temperature from Royals to Stembrus was about 19 degrees. Um, a tad warm. As you turn the corner, it dropped to about 16 degrees, and it was quite refreshing after working pretty hard against the, uh, the currents and, and the tough swells. Um, as you turn, you, you experience the most phenomenal um, coastal um, uh, caves, and there are so many seals, and we've experienced um, so many divers and, and fishermen out there too. It's just so beautiful. Uh, you carry on until you get to Bikini Beach, and then you get to um, the last 900 meters from the harbor wall, Bikini Beach, to the Sunset Beach. Then the temperature picks up to about 19 degrees again. It's shallow water, crystal clear, and, uh, and absolutely phenomenal. Um, I must say, recently, uh, somebody swam from Gordon's Bay to Royals and um, did it in half the time. Also it happens to be a very strong and fast swimmer, but also an amazing stretch back. Um, I believe when you get around Stembrus to Royals, uh, the current uh, gives you a bit of a push and it's just a beautiful swim. 
All right. So, yeah, there's a lot to be had, a lot to be said about the route. But um, just to go to your point around the fact that uh, once you turn that corner around Steenbras uh, River, which is the, sort of the estuary there, uh, and you sort of hug the, the coast there, it's not quite seven and a half k's, but it, but uh, it is nevertheless a stunning bit of swimming that can be done along that coast, and perhaps even room for a, an adventure swim there. So. Uh, this is, by the way, Royals. Um, Ryan, you, I don't know if that's where you ended up on your false pay crossing, but uh, um, no. But Tom, can you go just go back one slide, um, yeah. if you don't mind? Um, so, so also, it's it's actually interesting listening to to Howard as well because I'd love to do that swim. But what I did do is from the Kuchel Bay, so I did a ten k route. So exactly what Howard did, just ten k shorter. So I kind of started in the middle. Um, and I hugged the coast all the way around to Gordon's Bay and got 10 Ks, which was which was awesome. Um, and yeah, I mean, I would strongly recommend that visit. It's, it's usually scenic, especially if you, you you like me and can only breathe to the right. You never taught yourself the other way. <laughs> you can see stuff. Um, but what's also interesting, um, and, and let's maybe mustn't debate it too much, but whether I mean the, the currents Howard's talking to Howard, are they not tidal? If the tide's going in, you're going to get a bit of a push. If it's coming, if it's going out, you might not. I didn't experience any negative current swimming from Kuba into Bikini Beach. I think it was more crossing the bay. And you're right. Uh, it, it was possibly um, tidal. Um, but yes, um, I think the, the from Kuba to Sembras to Gordon's Bay must be a phenomenal. Yes, that's also... Yeah. So Amazing. just if you, but if you're you right, on, I think it would be a tidal uh, definitely. Yeah, if you, so it, it does take a little bit of planning if you're going to do one of these routes as to which way you want to do it. Check your tides. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So um, yeah, I'll just go on to my next points around that uh, that hugging of the coast uh, if, from the from the Steenbrus River right the way through to Gordon's Bay. Now we mapped it out. It's about six point four kilometers, not quite your seven and a half kilometers, but nonetheless a beautiful route, route perhaps for an adventure swim. And then, and then, Howard, you mentioned also potentially the swim from Gordon's Bay to Strand, about eight k's. Um, I, I suppose quite an urban uh, outlook on as you as you breathe to your right, uh, but uh, warm waters presumably and uh, pr pretty pleasant pleasant conditions all the way. Absolutely, no, that's a, a wonderful swim. I've done that a couple of times and just thoroughly enjoyed it from both sides, Strand to Gordon's Bay and uh, vice versa. Phenomenal swim, beautiful. Um, beautiful views and just lovely water, and also relatively summer warm water. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're going to move over to the west side of False Bay, and we start along with uh, a route that is a bit of a hidden gem. Uh, perhaps it needs to be re refound because it uh, used to be quite a popular and quite a famous route. Uh, uh, stories of thousands of people lining the beaches in Musenberg to welcome swimmers coming in from a sinus down to Musenberg swim in days gone by. Um, nonetheless, it, it gets done from time to time, but not, not, not to the volumes that the Robben Island routes or Cape Point does. But uh, Ryan, I bring you in here because you've done this route both as a single and I think the only male to do a double uh, of uh, uh, sinus down to Musenberg. What, what's so attractive about this swim? I totally echo your, your sentiments. Um, it, it's, it used to be really popular. And then, you know, when the first shark attack happened way back when, it, it kind of just died a horrible death. And it's really not necessary, although I, I totally get the sentiment. Um, I, I think the attraction for me, especially if you're starting in Simonstown, you know, um, kind of like the Robben Island, you've got a block of flats that's going to that's feature in your swim that you're going to watch get closer and closer. The Musenberg's also got that big block of flats that you yeah. watch. Um, it's, it's just amazing because I think like many people, not, not most, but I suppose speaking for myself, I know the, the, the Brass Bells, the Cork Bays, the St. James's, the Fisher Beaches and all those and the Glen Beaches. So to swim kind of off the coast and see those go by as, you, as you're swimming uh, on, on your journey um, is, I don't know, it's just something special. And, and to end, if you're starting in Simonstown, ending in Musenberg, which is the more common route, uh, you, you know, you kind of end in amongst all the surfers and uh, often got some mates there as well, just to say hi to. <laughs> so I, I just think it's, it's a beautiful route. It's usually warmer water. You can plan it in, in the, you know, you can find a day where it's 18, 19, 20 plus. 
Um, so you don't have to worry about the cold. You can take your time. You can stop. You can look around. And I think that's the beauty of, of um, the, the, the fall space side as well. It does get properly cold, so, but, but you can pick your day. And we, so many of us are used to the cold water stuff um, where it's you get in and go. You know, there, there's no kind of stop and look at the view for long if, if, as you're fighting the cold here. You can actually have a little bit of, of, of a break and look around and, and, uh, and, and really enjoy it. Yeah, thanks. Uh, and I, I don't think anybody on the panels swam this other route, this fish hook to Miller, Miller's point, but I think it's also, it, you know, similar, similar sort of uh, uh, yeah. outlook and the science talk on the museum, museum, museum but, uh, swim, but uh, also some great, uh, great scenic views along the road. And then you're going far through boulders, perhaps swimming with a couple of penguins as well as you go along through to Miller's Point, uh, Miller's Point tidal pool. So, uh, that's uh, another nice uh, 10 and a half, uh, 11 K swim. Mm. Okay, then we moved down a bit. And so this has been a, a swim that's been talked about quite a lot actually recently amongst swimmers. And, um, it's not an official CLDSA swim, but it might as well be because it is really a stunning swim and quite iconic because you start in Miller's Point at the top there. And then you go that big bay that you see there just past Partridge Point is Smith's Funkle Bay. And obviously, uh, You've got uh, kelp forests, so you've got crystal clear water at times. Uh, so really, really pretty um, if you if you swim on the right day. And then obviously down to Buffalo's Beach, which I think is important to mention to swimmers today that uh, uh, it's not so much about the swim, but it's also about uh, how easy it is to get a boat in and out of the water as well. And obviously you've got a launch point at, at Buffalo's Bay as well as Miller's Point. So it is a good potential swim um, for CLDSA. So Ryan, have you done this one? Um, no, I haven't. I think I've done pretty much everything in between, but I've never started and finished um, at those two points, Tom. Okay. All right, so moving swiftly along, and I think we won't spend too much time on this, the first part of the swim. It's the 8K famous uh, Cape Point swim, and I think uh, if you've, uh, I know there's some foreigners uh, signed in today. If you are thinking of coming out to South Africa and doing a Robben Island, maybe even a False Bay, um, this should would also be on your bucket list. This is an absolutely spectacular and well-known and iconic swim. Um, but not many people have done the slightly longer version, which is the three cakes swim, that instead of getting in at DS Beach, you're getting in at McClear's Beach. It extends it to about 10.2 Ks, um, but you, you take in most of the sites as you go around the point and then uh, up towards Buffalo's Bay Beach. Right, and so now we're going to a bit of uncharted territory. I think Lewis Pugh has swum this. He's actually done a famous swim from Musenberg right the way around the peninsula up to, uh, um, up to uh, Cape Town itself. Um, and obviously, he took in these routes as well as he went, not as official CLDSA swims, of course, but nonetheless, they were there. Um, the first one is from McClear's Beach, um, or it could be BS Beach, up to Olifansfors Beach, and that's about 15 Ks. Um, and then there's the 13 Ks from Olifansfors Beach. Right, these are rough estimates, by the way, so you can measure it yourself, but uh, um, up towards uh, Komaki or Komaki Long Beach. Um, so those are two uh, sizable swims to sort of uh, map out the west side of that peninsula. Right, so neither of these are current CLDSA swims, and I think Shanae will cover a little bit more um, at when, she, when we have her on towards the end of the talks, um, just to talk a little bit about what it would take to register a new CLDSA route. It's slightly different to doing your swim, uh, not much different, but there are a couple of considerations you need to take into account. Okay, so now we move on to quite the sort of re really interesting place, a place that's renowned for being quite cold, a place renowned renowned for some of the biggest and uh, biggest waves in, uh, in southern Africa when it comes to surfing. Uh, it's renowned for uh, seals. It's renowned for all sorts of things. It's renowned for Chapman's Peak. Um, so it's a great setting for um, uh, a couple of amazing swims. The first one, uh, Linda Thompson, uh, we, we're looking at swimming from Kormaki uh, uh, right the way, almost in a straight line at one o'clock, straight, straight through to Hart Bay Beach. And this you did not too long ago. Yes, I actually did this one, I think, beginning of January. And it is a quite a strong, yeah, I'd say it's a, not a beginner swim, but it's a super epic, beautiful swim to do. 
and it does start off in Komaki. I was expecting warmer temperatures when I did do it than what it was. Um, How cold was it? About 11. I think it went a little bit lower, but it was probably about 11 um, for what felt like most of the way. And I did, I think it got to 16 at the end. Um, so it wasn't the warmest swim. Um, I thought it was going to be warmer because Andrea Mason did it with us and she wasn't wearing her wetsuit on the boat. So my friend Ted did it with me and I said to him, Andrea's not wearing a wetsuit. It's, it's a warm swim. Don't worry. And then she put on a wetsuit and Derek said, it's 11. <laughs> so um, it, there were definitely cold patches. It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was cold. But it's a really. You had uh, some nice, um, nice sea life along the way. Yes, I think I saw every type of jellyfish. I felt like I was at the aquarium where there's the jellyfish display, and that was really beautiful. As well as seeing a sunfish. I remember when you and I did the Robin Island two years ago. There was that sunfish, so I always love seeing sunfish. And then as we got closer to Heart Bay, there was like pods of dolphins swimming quite close to the boat. And that was, so there was those positives of lots of marine life to distract from the cold. And so, we also so you needed... say, sorry, you're saying, um, you're saying not for the beginners though, not for a beginner. Um, it's, uh, why do you say that? Um, I guess because of the distance. It is, I came out at like, 11 I think over 11 but I think anyone who knows who's done a swim with me knows that you're going to have extra mileage <laughs> and so I think the official distance is 10 I see but it was over 11 so I think someone needs to be used to a little bit of distance and also used to cold and then there's the factor of current there was about I think probably like five kilometers of a head current where it felt like I was not moving. It was just like looking at the surroundings and like, are we moving at all? And I think that was a bit of a tough aspect, even towards Hard Bay, that the buildings as you're approaching from Chapman's Peak and the beach, you could see the beach, but for that last kilometer, I was, it was like, just didn't move and despite the dolphins and everything it was it was yeah there was a strong current so I think people need to be familiar with that. So Ryan nothing like a little bit of uh, staying in the same place just really mess with your head on a swim. <laughs> yes indeed um, I'm, I'm, I don't know yeah listen I've been in that situation many times not on that swim um, but yes, that's part of, of distance swimming. You know, sometimes you, you don't know because you're out in the middle of the ocean. You've got no point of reference. But some, you know, I've done a lot of swims where you can see the bottom. Swimming with Andrea Mason once, I remember famously, we, we were on top of one rock for about an hour and a half, which nearly broke us. Um, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, so Linda, so I'm going to show some photos now. Um, thanks for sharing these with us. And I think we want to get on to the next one, which is kind of an epic swim. And I've, I've got a sort of a more of a close-up map as well. So uh, just some some photos of, of the swim from Half Bay Round uh, at the corner to uh, to Sandy Bay. Uh, can you can you sort of talk us through the route? Well, firstly, talk us through these photos. Yeah. So that is the skipper, Michelle Petring. I'm sure some people have done some swims with her. And she was amazing, particularly in terms of like feeds, of knowing when to give us extra feeds and everything. And this was a route that I'd also never done. It was kind of a spur of the, another spur of the moment swim. Um, I did it with Catherine Pearson and her and I were planning a, to open a brand new route. So non a route that hasn't actually been on CLD, CLD list at all yet. So we're still going to do that. And then it wasn't possible to launch at Miller's. So we had to change our route. And we were looking at Hart Bay to Landadno. And then it ended up being just to Sandy Bay. So we started at Hart Bay on the beach. And then, yes, perfect. So then you go through 
past like the Hungberg and then it was actually I'd say probably decent temperature it was I think 13 at that time so it was quite warm and then it just suddenly became super turbulent super choppy before we even reached the seal island Dacre island and this one is again another swim that's probably more of an intermediate swim because there are many factors. There are seals getting super close. So unless you like close-up seal encounters and familiar with those, as well as like how strong the smell of the seals are. And there was like a huge amount of dead prawn shells lying around. And then many boats were crossing when we went around Dacre Island. There were many tour boats and fishing boats. And so that was something that we had to stay closer to Michelle's boat. And I really did try to. And yeah. then, so I think those are factors to consider. Then we got to the Boss 400, which I didn't quite realize is about seven and a half kilometers in. I'd done an adventure swim during lockdown with Derek and we went around Boss the Boss 400 and swam there and it, I got there a lot quicker on Derek's boat so I was kind of like when am I going to get to the Boss wreck when am I going to get there and then it was kind of felt like towards the end and the temperature was about 10 degrees I think 10.2 10.3 from before Dacre Island and so on your map where it shows O's ship that was when the temperature I think increased probably in, up to about 12, 13. And then at Sandy Bay, it was about, I think, 6, 15, 16. So that's another factor in terms of that it can be cold. Uh, and these hot based swims can get cold. And from just yeah. before, yeah? No, no, I was just saying, I, I, I've got to, we've got to move on to a few more things. I know I'm just checking out time now and we've got a few more minutes left. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we'll just end it there if that's okay, Linda. Um, yeah. I'm, yeah, I think my, quite a surprise, I think, when you end up uh, finishing a swim on Sandy Bay with all the, the bathers in uh, various uh, states of dress or otherwise. Uh, I think uh, they but, were very uh, surprised sure, too. Yeah, I'm sure they were surprised. All right, so, um, okay, so we're now going to move on quickly. I Just just a reminder for those who've been a CLDSA member for a few years, uh, two years ago, we did a, a the Great Cape Swim Survey in 2020, and we asked the uh, the, the people in the top left there, um, the, the responders, what were you, what are your top three bucket list swims? And I think obviously uh, Robin Island's a big bay for those who had done it was uh, high up on that list. But very surprisingly, the next one was Fandagno to Camps Bay. Um, Cape Boyd was uh, made it into third, uh, a bit of a surprise. So so I love that Camps Bay is clearly a route people want to do. And uh, we move on to the next slide to actually bring in Monica Hayes here because she hasn't just done it once, she's actually done it twice. Uh, two perfect days apparently. Um, and what a great swimmer. There's a lot of people swimming along that, 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 that ocean uh, break um, from Odokral through to Cozy Bay and to Buckhoven and then through to Camps Bay, but not many people doing this long swim from Flandanda Camps Bay. So, so uh, Monica, tell us about this swim. Tom, I was very lucky. I chose two almost perfect days. So the temperature on the first one I did was about 15 to 16 degrees. And then a couple of years later, it was about 14 degrees. Um, but we got a bit of a swell pushing us on the second mm. swim we did, which was brilliant. Um, I have to say, I found it easier than a Robert Island. That's probably why I did it again. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Robert yeah. Island for me, although I've done it 10 times, it's a very elusive swim and it's been very cold and I've swum it at all different temperatures. And this was just a lucky, two lucky swims where the, where the conditions, you know, were pretty good. Yeah. And okay. it's, just, it's quite beautiful yeah. because of the coastline and looking up at the, you know, the mountain range, the 12 apostles. Um, yeah, it was awesome. It was where I encountered my first sunfish. Um, and the ones from there were also dolphins, although I didn't actually see them because they were on the other side of the boat, but we were told there were lots of dolphins around. The sunfish was a bit of a scare because um, we suddenly, like everyone stopped <laughs> as we saw the fin and then obviously realized it was a sunfish. 
Ryan, did you want to say something? I just to, yeah, just, just to mention for those who don't know, generally there's a current that runs from the Landadno mm -hmm. side down towards Robben Island down that coast. So if you're planning any of these routes, uh, that's generally the direction you want to go. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself stuck into it. And hence, of course, um, the other swim that you've done, Monica, and I'm sure you've done it, Ryan, it's from Clifton right the way through to Oceana, um, also generally in that direction, um, swimming, yeah. swimming, hugging the urban, uh, uh, urban uh, uh, um, display that is Sea Point uh, along the coast there. So uh, that's one. That's that's a nice swim as well, right? Yeah, that's an awesome swim. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. And then I see if you're really, really keen, you can uh, head up, head up to uh, Robin Island directly from Camps Bay as well, 20 k's. You haven't done that, Monica, but uh, perhaps yeah. Ryan, you've considered that. Um, I have considered it, never done it. Tim. I'm sure guys like Tony Selma have done it though. <laughs> no, he's shaking his head. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's a long route. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's. I don't know. I don't want to say it's my bucket list. I certainly don't lie awake wondering if I should do it but uh, it has factored in my head in the past but never quite uh, closed the deal on that. Well it's a familiar familiar area the western seaboard thanks Monica for that and um, I'm going to move on to, just to fight, fight uh, to, to to finish off uh, with the with the familiar um, Rob, uh, picture of Robin Islands here the 7.4k swim there um, that we've all uh, all done many times um, there's a couple of other swims here, of course, the 10.2k swim, which is the uh, Three Anchor Bay to Robben Island swim. It's size of it's 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 the it's a quite famous actually. Prior to the 7.4k, it was also quite a popular swim, um, and is less so in modern times. But uh, you can do the dog leg if you combine those two routes together. There's also the Milnerton Lighthouse swim that happens once a year generally, so you can join that. Uh, that's great swim. Uh, which is a very pretty swim. Uh, I've done it once. And then, uh, which certainly is a hidden gem, not every day is suitable for it, but uh, the Round Robin Island swim, um, Ryan, um, you know, a lot of people have talked to doing it, but, but very few people have done it. Um, but it yeah. is, I think, I think somebody's done it three times, but uh, uh, i.e. Th three loops, but, uh, but it's 11 Ks in one loop. And it's, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's quite something. You've done it's that. A too. I, I totally encourage everyone uh, to, to do around the island. It's not that far and you get all the different conditions um, in terms of which direction the wind might be blowing and the chop and the, and the, the, the fall of the waves. But right at the back of the island is really, really beautiful. And, you know, there are wrecks there and everything. So it's, it's quite amazing. I would strongly encourage it. And then just, Tom, quickly, on the three anchor bay swim, so where it's got the 102 um, generally, the, as I said, the current's running towards Robin Island, um, but there is a tidal shift. I think it's a spring tide. I haven't quite figured it out. And a current that runs the other direction from where it's called Cutler's Current. Uh, again, Tony Solmeyer will know it. And I try to catch Cutler's Current one day. I even had Bar the late Barry Cutler on the boat to make sure I found it. And I was going for trying to go from the island to the mainland for my first time ever in a sub three hour crossing. It was my goal and I trained hard for it. And uh, it took me five hours and 24 minutes. So if you get it wrong, <laughs> you get the opposite. Uh, of trouble. But I challenge everyone watching who's gonna do that. So I'm try and find Cutler's Current and you'll get a record for Robin Island to the mainland. And Howard, what's your favorite route? <laughs> well, I suppose at the moment it's Robin Island to, um to Bloberg, but I thoroughly enjoy Robin Island to Melkbos. Mm. So that's uh, just, it's not marked here, but it's up, up north of Big Bay for those don't know. That's, that's an amazing swim, really. I've, I've encountered sea life there, dolphins, whales, seals. Um, we've had so much fun. I've had the whole crew jump off a boat to, um, to join in with the dolphins. And yeah, we've always enjoyed that. Quite a bumpy launch from, um, um, obviously from the beach to Robin Island, but a phenomenal swim, really enjoyable. I'll go back and do that. I'll definitely do that a couple of times. All right, so um, I think uh, just, um, we're going to have Shanae come on now um, and answer some, uh, well, so, so let's talk a little bit more about booking your swims. Um, there's a few questions that have come out from the from uh, various swimmers um, over, over the last few months. So I think it's just good that she talks to that. And also, how what, what does it take to actually 
book a, a brand new CLDSA route as well. So she'll cover that as well. In the meantime, please put your questions in the comments section. I didn't mention that earlier, but uh, if you've got any questions of the swimmers, uh, um, of, um, of Shanae herself, um, um, and you've got any questions you want to ask, please put them in there. We'll try and get to them as, much, uh, as quickly as we can. Okay, so if I hand over to Shanae. Thanks, Tom. So if anyone is wanting to register a new swim, all they would need to do is email us on www, um, or actually just the swims at cldsa.co.za, and then just let us know what swim route you want to do. You obviously need to have a skipper with you, so you can choose. Um, I mean, we've got we can assist you with that. We do have skippers that are listed as well. We also need two observers on the boat and then also a CLDSA committee member. So we will need to go out with you on the day. You then need to obviously swim your route. If there's anyone obviously that wants to swim with you, they're obviously more than welcome to. And then we obviously need to then ratify that swim and then um, make sure that it gets into the system. And then once it is in the system and it has been ratified, then you will then register that swim, which you obviously need to do beforehand. So we we please advise you to register your swim at least 48 hours before you actually want to attempt the swim. And then what you do there is you literally would just log in onto your portal and then you just go to, um, it's basically members. And then under members, you would go under swim applications. And then from there, you just fill in all your swim details. And then you actually just put in your skipper's details, your observer's details. It's very straightforward. And then, um, and you basically just add it to your swim bag. And once you've added to your swim bag, it takes you straight to the payment portal where you then just pay for your swim um, of 200 Rand. And then your swim is ready to, um, basically it's registered. And as soon as it's you swim, then we get the observer report obviously back from the observer itself that has been on the swim with you. So if there are any questions about any swims that you do want to obviously register, if you want to have new swims done, please just email us on swims at cldsa.zero.za. Okay, we just had a point, I think more than a question here from Sean Hay, we're just saying, listen, it's great to hear about all these swims and how uh, talking about the growth of open water swimming in the UK. Um, but uh, yes, we're absolutely keen to lure those, uh, those, uh, those British swimmers as we have been actually over the years, uh, coming through to, uh, to, to South Africa to do some of these swims. It's, it's cold water swimming, and that's why we're the cold water capers. So um, let's not be mistaken with that. You're going to get warmer swimmers in the med, warmer swims in the med. But down here, there's some, certainly some very special swims. And uh, just while we wait for a couple of other questions to come in, I, I want to ask each of the panel members, um, what is their, what's on their bucket list uh, for or future swims that they haven't done before. Monica, uh, what, 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 what swims do, have you have been having your eye on or that you would like to share with us? Um, I'd like to do a double Robin Island. And I'm That's also great. training, I'm training for a very, very big swim. <laughs> Whether it happens yeah. or not, you'll have to wait and see. I've more or less booked a swim for next year. So we'll see if it happens. Crossing I suppose Falls you know you, you you are crossing False Bay. Okay, mm. I've been wanting. A, I've been looking at it from Roy Els from my house at Roy Els for many years, and I've always wanted to do it. But I didn't really think it was possible. So it's kind of come more into orbit now, and I'm thinking, okay, if I train really hard, you never know. I'll have to see how far I get. All right, so double thumbs up from Ryan Stramwood there. Um, Linda, what, what do you have on your bucket list? Um, what I want to do is the Fishhook Millers Point. I thought I would have done that by now, so hopefully pretty soon. Uh, double Roman Island and Around the Island is definitely on my hit list. And then I also really enjoyed hearing how I talk about the Royal Isles Gordons Bay and the ones around there. So I'm going to add those to the list through. Um, so yeah, I think I've got, still got a few to work through. We'll keep you busy. Um, Howard, um, yeah, I mean, I know that hundreds coming and looming very soon, but uh, any other swims apart from uh, uh, the various Robin Island routes that you have your eye on? Yes, well, I've just been informed that my, um, Gibraltar slot has just opened up. 
So hopefully all goes well. I'll be doing Strait of Gibraltar in July. So the slot is from the 8th to the 24th. And then in October, it will be October, November, it will be um, across False Bay too. Okay, that's great. Okay, so there's quite a lot of interest in that <laughs> amongst the group here today. And then uh, Ryan, I mean, you've done most of those swims. So what's left? What's left for Ryan Stramrud? Oh, there, there's still a lot left for me, Tom. Um, it's a little, my, my focus is, is shift a little bit just for a year or two. I've got <laughs> some post-COVID stuff to deal with. Um, to, to like, uh, yeah, just to get, get ahead again. Um, but I also just want to mention, you know, Howard, firstly, that uh, Gibraltar swim is, is phenomenal. I wish you luck on that. It's, it's really, it's really lucky. Um, I did it with Tony Selma. I've done it twice. I did it with Tony Selma, I think, uh, first time in 2005. Really cool. And then another one, I want to encourage anyone who ever travels and they want to do a warm water swim that's completely within everyone's reach. And that's the Bonificio Strait. I know we're talking Cape Town with swims here, Tom, but seeing we, you know, how it shifted it for us. <laughs> and that's Italy to France. Um, so it's got that real pool and it's warm water and it's uh, it's just clear. Well, it was clear on the day. I did it rough as hang. Um, it was a, a swim that nearly kicked me in the butt because I took it for granted. Um, but I would strongly encourage that one as well. Um, yeah, so, so sorry, back to your question. Ryan does have a big mission up his sleeve, um, but it's it's not going to happen anytime soon. Sorry, I'm elusive, evasive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, um, I'd like to thank, the, oh, well, sorry, there is one extra question. Has anybody ever attempted, I think I know the answer to this from the word go, um, attempted from three anchors to Robben Island, round the island to Big Bay, then Big Bay to Milnerton Lighthouse, all in one swim. Um, so certain people have, people have done the... Uh, Cross the island and basically done round the island in the, the dog leg, essentially. Uh, yeah. That's been done, but I don't think the Milnerton extra 10Ks on the Milnerton swim has been done. Officially, anyway. Okay. All right. Um, I'd like to thank my panel members uh, for uh, taking uh, this journey with me around the peninsula and uh, sharing me with, with me and the rest of the listeners all your thoughts and uh, around the various interesting swims that you've done. So thank you very much for uh, being with me and thanks to everybody for joining in on the swim. Also I'd like to thank the producer, the unsung hero of Cold Water Capers, that's Maneen Murray, who puts everything together to make sure it happens. Um, we've got some very exciting Cold Water Capers coming up. I think the next one is going to interest a lot of you. So we, uh, we will let you know what that is in the, in the next uh, few weeks or so. We're trying to do these roughly every two months or so. We think that's probably right, about the right amount of time. It's, I think is our seventh one. So we're gonna continue as long as we can get the viewers, uh, the, the people uh, joining in. So thank you very much for joining in and we will see you next time. Mm. Thank you. Tom, yeah. thanks so much. Thank you all. Thanks for listening. <laughs>